Joining us now is congressional candidate for Washington's 5th District, Christopher Armitage, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John, I appreciate it. I'm really excited to talk to you and tell some more people about our, our little neck of the woods and the bigger picture of it all. Uh, I, I'm very excited about that as well. So why don't we start with your neck of the woods? Give us an idea of what uh, the 5th District is like. Well, it's Eastern Washington, so we have the second biggest city in the state of Washington, Spokane. But it's actually 25% bigger than New Jersey. We have 10 counties, but two thirds of the population is in one of those counties. So it's very economically diverse. It's a rapidly growing community. It's a place that I love. Uh, I was stationed here at our Air Force base for two enlistments and just this is my home. Mm -hmm. I love it. Now, in terms of politics, my impression as an outsider, I've never visited the area. I've just, I've heard things about the Spokane area is that it does lean a little bit more conservative. And we should make note that the incumbent is a Republican. So tell us a little bit about the, the political makeup of that area. Yeah, you know, we were actually on the red to blue list that the DCCC put out in 2018. And it looked like we were gonna be a flippable district. And we ran a, Hillary Clinton light type candidate, someone who spent all their time in the two major towns that are in our 10 counties. They did private fundraisers and public speaking engagements. Uh, a lot of people felt ignored and it's not just money that wins these races. And like I said, this community is really diverse when you travel up and down the district. I mean, in some of these rural counties, we've done events and you'd be amazed how many serious rabid progressives show up and are ready to actually win this race. Okay, so so tell us now about uh, how you're going to differentiate yourself from the 2018 effort. So what is what is your race going to be like? How did you get into this? Yeah, uh, well, personally, I've made the pledge not to take any corporate money. I think it's important that we walk the walk. One of my big frustrations with our 2018 candidate was when she took corporate money. I, you know, a big reason why I decided to run was as a working class guy. I can't give my vote to someone who's going to use. My healthcare, my family's healthcare, my community's healthcare as a bargaining chip for political gain. And that's just way too many people who get into politics. Mm -hmm. So this isn't really something I pictured for myself in my in my life, but I think that we deserve to be represented by one of us. You know, I've made minimum wage in the last few years. I've avoided going to the doctor as I had strep throat and I'm sweating through pillows, but I'd never had strep throat before, so I didn't know if that's what it was. And so I was avoiding going to the doctor because who knows what kind of bill I'm gonna get. Meanwhile, when I was active duty military, I was deployed to the border of Iraq and Kuwait and I was helping family members with their copays for wow. medical bills. Wow. That's and not fair. Nobody should have to go through that. Certainly not. And so obviously you're coming from a different place than the previous attempt to unseat Kathy McMorris Rogers, coming from a very different place than Rogers especially. And so what what is she represented for the district? I know that she takes a lot of money from corporations, something you're not gonna do, especially from dirty energy corporations. So what what has she been for the district over the past few years? She's been an absentee. She votes with Trump 95% of the time. Wow. She shows up. She, she has. She's not well liked. Even conservatives out here don't like her because they feel like she's not defending Trump enough. Or you know, a lot of our conservatives in this district are more libertarian leaning, and she's a more evangelical Republican. Mm. Uh, so she kind of on both sides. People really don't like her. She regularly has two or three Republican challengers. Uh, and so, you know, she just she's voted against the ACA 50 times. Wow. We have rural hospitals up and down this district. They were not turning a profit. They were losing money every single year until the ACA. Now, I every so every time she's voted against the ACA, she's voted against our rural hospitals. You know, I I experienced universal single payer health care in the military and it was great. <laughs> I never worried I, 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 I please anyone out there who knows someone in the military, no matter how conservative they are, ask them, do you feel cheated out of private insurance? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> no. they don't. You, you, yeah. you know, you've, you've been propagandized to, you didn't know how little choice you actually had while you were in there. Um, <laughs> how dare I? Exactly, so uh, so you, you've pointed out now that you've got in that area, you've got, you, you describe them as rabid progressives. You also have some disaffected uh, conservatives. So when you're out there and you're campaigning, what are, what are some of the issues that you're focusing on to try to bring in either one or the other or both of those groups? Well, you know, Medicare for all is very popular, even among our farming and rural communities. 
Uh, underemployment and unemployment, especially in five of our 10 counties, are a massive, well, the un- underemployment in every county, but unemployment in some of our counties is over 10%. Mm-hmm. And that's just the people who are actively unemployed, haven't been out of the workforce for years. People need good jobs. That's why in our district, we're hosting Green New Deal forums. We're, I'm, I'm a member of the Sunrise Movement. I helped organize the awesome. climate strike out here. Uh, we had a thousand people in downtown Spokane show up for the climate strike. It was wow. incredible. And so we're working with the Sunrise Movement to hold Green New Deal forums in every one of these counties and communicate to the rural communities how this is gonna be the greatest economic stimulus package since the uh, since World War II. It's gonna rebuild our middle class. It's gonna give people the chance to not just have jobs, but have good jobs. And that's a core part of my platform is communicating to people. Yeah. And even though, you know, in our district, I mean, we have, some people who, you know, we had a, a state representative who uh, is in our district who wrote a conservative manifesto basically calling for uh, any any man who's, who's pro-choice to be killed. And uh, we have armed mili- conservative militias out here that are pretty serious. And that, that, uh, that person who wrote that manifesto, who's a state representative from here, he was reported to the FBI for that by our Trump-supporting sheriff. Wow, And so it's, yeah, it, it's pretty intense, but there's so much pushback. People are ready for the change. It's just, we're not gonna get there if we keep running candidates that people have to hold their nose when they vote for. Yeah, People wanna vote for one of us. And that's what happens is everywhere we go in this community, um, we're seeing that when you listen to people, regardless of where they are on the spectrum, I see that we have more in common. I have more in common with them. Our campaign has more in common with them than their current representation. We're getting back to the, to the you know, the working class core of this. And in, in, so we actually had a Speaker of the House from this district, Tom Foley. He lost his seat in 94 in the red wave after the assault weapons ban. And he is still a legend in this district. He was elected first in 1962. And the, the legend has it that he won by going <laughs> to every single small town tavern and shaking hands with everyone in that tavern, no matter how conservative, and saying, I'm Tom Foley and I'm running for the US House of Representatives. Hmm. Well, you better start hitting up some uh, some taverns there. Uh, but anyway, it's been been great getting a chance to know a little bit about you, Christopher, uh, and your candidacy. If people would like to find out more about what you want to accomplish, if you uh, you, you get into the house, uh, where can they go to find out more? I'd recommend going to armitageforcongress.com, A-R-M-I-T-A-G-E-F-O-R, congress.com. And please consider uh, contributing, you know, monthly recurring contribution of any amount. It's all grassroots, and a lot of the establishment out here doesn't believe that you can run a viable campaign without corporate money. We're here to prove them wrong. And in 2020, we will win. We're earning votes out there every day. And we get to replace a Republican with someone who supports the Green New Deal, single payer Medicare for all, tuition free universities and trade schools. Uh, And I also wanna mention, uh, if I ever get the chance uh, publicly, I, I totally support any TYT pledges that you guys wanna throw my way. Uh, That would be awesome. Well, we have the economic pledge. Maybe we can talk about that sometime. Cool, thanks, John. Okay, thank you, Christopher, and uh, good luck with the run. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.